hello there greetings and welcome back so today we're going to be having a look at the seventh film in the godzilla franchise and that is ibera horror of the deep um made back in 1966 and directed by jun fukuda um so with the backstory behind this movie, Toho had plans to bring King Kong back, okay? They was going to bring King Kong back, get him back into the franchise, well, get him back to the big screen. They had the rights to use King Kong for another year or so. So the idea very much was to, like, let's get Kong in. Let's get Kong involved with this movie. Though when the US company sort of found out Ishiro Honda was not directing, uh, I think they sort of bailed out on the project, Um Though Toho liked the script of this new movie so much, they simply decided to put Godzilla in there in place of King Kong. I mean, why not, right? You know, you haven't got one, let's use somebody else. If you look at this movie, Godzilla does have a few semi-sort of King Kong moments. There, you can It's very evident in places that this was going to be a King Kong type of movie. Um, he shows a fondness for the girl, Dayo. If you remember, like in King Kong vs. Godzilla, Kong loves electricity and they sort of revive Godzilla in this month, in this one with um, electricity at one point. The studio did get to make uh, King Kong Escapes the following year with Honda at the helm. And I'm, am I right in thinking there was actually even a King Kong cartoon show? Um, I'm not sure if any of you remember it. I seem to have images of my mind there was a King Kong uh, cartoon show. Um, what the film, this film does, it allows the franchise to sort of take a somewhat new direction. If you recall, like with my Godzilla reviews up to this point, they were always now, especially the past two or three movies, they were looking like, where else can we go? What else can we do? How else can we sort of inject something fresh into the franchise? Um this, this film in particular, it was taking a bit of a new direction. Rather than just trying to outdo the previous movie, let's not worry about that. And let's just try and give the audiences something new. Rather than saying, let's try and go better, let's try and go bolder, let's, how about let's treat this film as its own separate thing. It's still going to be a Godzilla movie, but why, let's stop worrying about what's come before and let's just let this film be like its own entity and that kind of thing. Just give that, like I mentioned, you know, just give the audience something new. The film coming out of that typical Japanese city setting and here being set on a Pacific um, Pacific island. It also goes for more of a light-hearted tone and even touches sort of on the spy film motif, which, of course, was doing the rounds at the time, uh, you know, namely the sort of the James Bond type of movies. I think the idea with setting it on an island was primarily to keep the budget down as well. Um, if you take into account the cost and labour with doing miniature work and that kind of thing, I think it was a lot less expensive to set the film on sort of like a you know an island where there is obviously you got giant monsters there's going to be sort of less to destroy there's going to be no towering skyscrapers or anything like that so i think that was some of the reason why they did that i think with the i think um you know with the pace of the movie i think it works really well um which i will get into as we go through the movie and i think it's a very good action adventure romp if you can call it such a thing i think this one definitely has more of an action adventure type of vibe to it going on which does like like i say you can't keep doing the same thing and they really were i think you know, i know not necessarily everybody likes this movie or it's not rated that high but there is still a lot to be enjoyed here i believe as well the same godzilla suit was used from the previous movie so by the end of this the suit had really gone through it um the suit the godzilla suit involved had really um, been through the you know through the mill so to speak i think although honda isn't behind the camera in charge it's still it's still very much an enjoyable godzilla movie even though it was originally uh, as far as i'm aware going to be sort of a king kong movie but anyway so it starts with this woman like a spirit mountain seeing this like mystic and tells her that yatta is still alive who we learn is a fisherman that has gone missing Friotta, his brother, has gone to the authorities and want them to send another search party in order to find Yatta. Seeing a poster for a dance competition at the police station, I might add, he goes down there in the hope he can complete in the first prize. He goes to compete as the first prize is like a yacht that he can use to go and find his brother. So already you're like, we've got how you've gone from one state of affairs to the other state of affairs. Like somebody's gone missing, okay. Police station, sees a dance competition, first prize is a yacht. This is sort of the first few minutes of the movie um so say that's the prize and then he can go and find his brother he meets these two guys who take him to what to one even though it isn't theirs they take him to a yacht even though it's not theirs this guy yoshimura played by the great akira Tar Tar if 
I can say his name right, Takarada. Um, he's on there already, and he has like a shotgun in their face, wondering who they are. Even then, after like five seconds, he's like, okay, you can stay. Let's get some sleep. He's staying on there. He's sleeping, and it's like, who are you? And it's like, you know, we're like, we're just, whoa, 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 sorry. He's like, all right, then, you can stay here as well. You can, you can sleep with two. They hear on the radio that someone stole some money and an Amer like an American yacht. Ryota, whilst they're all, they're all asleep, sets the boat for sale. And they are like, what, you refuse to turn the boat around? And they won't. I mean, he doesn't want to turn the boat around, right? There's four of them on this boat. These three guys could easily have overpowered him, right? They could have easily overpowered the guy and turned the boat around. I mean, I guess the only reason they didn't um, is that they don't know how to sail a boat. Um, I'm sure they... But I think between all three of them, they probably could have figured it out like a way to sort of turn the boat around. Because they didn't want to go with him on this adventure. He's just sort of... Um, like, sort of taken this boat against their sort of um, blessing and their approval and they've all set sail so so they could have easily have a, they need to go on this journey but the thing is they say they can't sail a boat and i'm sure like i say all three of them could have overpowered him i mean ryota could have at least asked them first if they wanted to come with him i mean the two from the dance co competition don't you know don't they have any work they're just quite happy to just <laughs> go, go along or love one you know or that's another thing like he's taking them on this like this trip where they, they didn't want to go on they might have loved ones be married that kind of thing it's never explained obviously but you don't know so a storm hits and they see this giant claw coming out of the ocean which destroys their boat and they wash up on this island once on the island they spot this ship approaching which is delivering some tribes people for barrels of x1 the people that operate here are the red bamboo which for some reason always makes me think of the red ribbon army from dragon ball don't ask me why um some of these tribes people try to escape and um god whenever i see people running barefoot on stones and pebbles like that it just it, there's they're sort of running on like i say all these pebbles and rocks and things and it just makes me cringe so much and i just you know obviously i don't want to be putting my feet on pebbles and stones like that but they're just running across them um just it just makes me wince so two of them try to escape by raft but Evera makes short work of that one of the female characters dio escapes and runs into our ragtag crew i think it's dio how you say her name so she runs into like these this lot and what i love about this one is that it goes down the action adventure route as i mentioned earlier in many ways it plays it it, it in terms of like the action and the way the narrative is and the way the film sort of holds up it's probably got a lot more in common with sort of kong skull island than anything else the idea of an island base um you know that kind of thing with you know this evil army is cool enough but you check in some like kaiju action and you have a winner that's why I, I really do like this movie so whilst being pursued they find a cave so they can hide and get shelter and so we learn that the girl is from infinite island which we know is the home of uh, mothra and that ryota's brother is there too so the guy he's been looking for he's on the island he's on infinite island we now cut to infinite island where they're all praying to mothra our heroes also find an unconscious godzilla asleep in a cave our crew even use this old like the old sneaking behind a bush gag so they can get to one of the storage bays <laughs> like they're just moving along sort of the army sort of base and the headquarters just uh, behind the guise of this um just very like this bush they're just carrying around um yoshimura being the safe cracker, cracker that can basically get them through any door some really nice cool sets here as they are sneaking around the lab and around the base talking of yoshimura if you look at akira takarada's performance here and compare compare it to his role in the previous movie as uh, fuji the astronaut um two very different roles um i think it's takarada Takarada, how you say his surname. Two very different roles than like when he played like Fuji in the previous movie. Very different, but here I think he, he puts on a much better performance. I think he he really does uh, as Yoshimura, he does really enjoy himself as sort of that rogue, sort of safe cracker kind of guy. Um he pulls sort of reluctant like that reluctant hero uh, role in this movie. So whilst trying to do in the lab, I love how with no prior knowledge, one of them knows right away that it's an atomic fusion chamber. They've got with no explanation now they know that they just open the thing that's an atomic fusion chamber now i know an atomic fusion chamber so nita one of the guys from the dance off gets captured and ryota floats off in like this weather balloon thing whilst trying to avoid his pursuers we learn that the people from infant island are being used to sort of make this yellow liquid so the red bamboos can use it to keep this yellow liquid all it's the purpose of it is it just keeps ibera away or ebera um it just basically whatever reason he doesn't like this like yellow liquid so that's what they 
use um, so it doesn't affect their sort of ships coming in and their drop-offs and that kind of thing so go figure right Ryota luckily manages to drift all the way to infant island and is reunited with his brother um, as he floats off in like this weather balloon thing so he lands on infant island he finds his brother and so it's just so lucky that the wind was just working in his favor that day you know what are the chances you will notice that the twin fairies are not played by the peanuts this time who tells Ryota that the island with the red bamboo is called devil's island so back on the island who are hide like they're hiding in the clay the, the caves i mentioned pl they plan to wake up godzilla so he can help them and how do they plan to do this well by shocking the crap out of him involving a sword lightning and some very long necklace wire that's how so yeah they the the way they go but you know how these plans come together i you know it, it involves a sword some lightning and a necklace Ryota and his brother set off from Infant Island and some yellow liquid that the locals gave them. Nita, who was captured and tasked with helping make this yellow liquid, suggested they all make a phony batch. I mean, he shouts this, right? He shouts this at one point. Look, let's make a phony batch. And he's not sure why they haven't even been... They're not even supervised or, or like monitored why they're making this stuff. They're just basically left to it. And they're basically just left to it and then with no guards, no security or anything like that. Also, the people in the cave have been waiting three days for lightning, as mentioned at one point. So I'm not sure how they've been even survived this long uh, with no food or anything like that. I mean, they've been in a cliff face for that long with no provisions, food or anything like that. So a storm happens, Ibra shows up and the whole waking up Godzilla with a charge idea, though it probably may have been meant for Kong, is still quite cool. It's still quite an interesting way they've gone about it here. With the storming and everything and the way it's shot and the way you know really going on it really does work so we have some of that classic volleyball with a boulder action between the two monsters let's call them both fighting in water godzilla at one stage doing an awesome throw on ibera um after the storm Rieta and his brother after being caught in like a hunting trap are reunited with everyone um, but he's cut short as they are all soon hunted down by the red bamboo when Godzilla comes across Dao, even though you can clearly see this was a King Kong S type of sequence, it was nice that they let Godzilla actually sort of slow down, um, which is something I always, I know, like I mentioned, it was meant to be sort of a Godzilla, uh, sorry, King Kong type of film. But rather than having just Godzilla walk around, cause loads of destruction, doing his usual thing, here we get to see Godzilla take his foot off the gas a bit. We get to see him sort of slow down a little bit, um, which I thought was quite cool. Um, like, so we could actually, as an audience, all take a breather as well. It's nice they let him have a moment of calm rather than just stomping around, causing loads of destruction. I mean, so chilled is this scene that God, Godzilla actually even falls asleep. That's how chilled this scene is. Then this giant bird comes at him, which is like atomic, like he atomics the breast the hell out of. And then these fighter jets come down attacking him. Dio, the innocent maiden from Infinite Island, is nearly getting blown up in the whole process. And for some reason, the film producers thought it would be a good idea to see to set this whole scene to some surfer music, you know, to keep with that sort of, I mean... I don't know, probably another title for this film could be Godzilla Goes Hawaii, I don't know. But yeah, they said it's like this very off-the-time sort of surfer music. You do ever get a sense that they were really trying to push it with a bit with the action scenes, some, you know, some great angles used. And also, whose planes are these? Are they the Red Bamboos, the armies? Um, they're just like some fighter jets turn up and, you know, just there's some fighter jets. It doesn't really matter. We just get a nice, cool action scene. He is crushing the planes, using his tail, etc. He then goes to smash the crap out of the red bamboo base. Uh, Yoshimura frees the tribe people, and at the point, at this point, the island has two hours until it is blown up. There's always a self-destruct, a explosion that's going to happen. Everything's going to blow up. Uh, the red bamboo leave, and the boat and the boat they are using gets broken to bits as they were using the phone, like the phony liquid. If you recall, they were going to make a phony batch. It was made by Nita and the tribe's people. So even when Godzilla fights Ibra at the end, we had that funky surf music going on. Ryuta and Yoshimura are trying to turn the self-destruct off while the people from Infant Island are building a big net as Mothra has been summoned and all the while Godzilla and Ibra are going at it. Godzilla even goes so far as to bite one of his claws off. I think also as well that Godzilla in this movie has a lot more personality um, that we get to see compared to some of the previous movies. I think that the Godzilla in this movie definitely has a lot more in terms of character like i mentioned the slowing down scenes in there we do you do get to see 
dare I say it, like I mentioned, a bit more of sort of the Godzilla character, uh, if that makes sense. And so basically Mothra turns up and everyone gets into the net they have made. Also as well, this film is a very sad shot of Godzilla left on the island all on his own as it is about to be blown up, which to me is something that, like we mentioned, when they had that kind of shot, they did it in the previous movie as well, but it does, more recent film that done that was sort of Jurassic World, uh, Fallen Kingdom. And that, that kind of shot, I was a, that in that movie, you can't help but wonder if they watched this and like took that kind of sh shot from this. Um, with Godzilla like sort of being left and abandoned on this island. The people escaping via Mothra yell at Godzilla to get into the water. The island gets blown to kingdom come and thankfully as I'm sure you know Godzilla survives. Um, I really like this movie as I say because it, it has that sort of although there's not quote unquote spies um, in this movie it does play pretty much like a spy film. It's definitely like I mentioned got that sort of spy nature to it like i say an exotic tropical island this enemy base um you've got monsters in there there and there's a huge amount like vast amount to enjoy with this movie as as well action adventure vibe going on. i think the island setting really does work i know it wasn't necessarily what godzilla fans wanted because godzilla fans wanted distraction they wanted uh you know cities being destroyed that kind of thing but i think the island setting really does work um, I do love as well how you think they're going to get all preachy with one of the characters talking about atomic bombs and hoping they'll use for good, to which the character Yoshimura replies, yeah, okay, thanks, Professor. You know, I've, I love that, and it's almost as well, um, if you recall my review for Once Upon a Time in China and America, where, like, sort of Wang Fahang starts to get all preachy and they sort of all fall asleep or they don't want him to do one of the uh, his long speeches. It's a bit like that here. Like, he, they do a little... Maybe we should think twice before we do X, X, and X. But here they do a little follow-up comment as though to say, yeah, all right, thanks, Professor. Like, duh. You know, like, almost like don't patronise. And I think they sort of become aware of what, what they were going to do. Obviously, the first film very much um, was true to that sort of, you know, the idea of nuclear testing and the nuclear bombs and such. But here, at this point where the Godzilla franchise was going, they couldn't afford, they didn't need to start getting all preachy about things because they the films very quickly become very much about just, you know, just silly, good entertainment. Um, so as I say, we aren't going to, be, you know, it's a film that I think is, I think it's vastly underrated um, and it's just a fun Godzilla movie like uh, Invasion of Astro Monster. I think these two in particular um, from talking about the Criterion um, Shower Era box set from this period, I've done, give or take probably two, of, probably my favourites from the box set. Um, but no doubt as the reviews go on and I review the other movies, I'll say some of them are my favourites because you know I'm like, sometimes you can ask me one day of the week what my favourite whatever film is next day is completely different but i really enjoyed ever horror of the deep now, let me know if you have seen this movie what you think is it one of your favorite godzilla movies did you have you got the criterion box set have you been a fan of the godzilla movies for long and what you enjoy but um thank you very much indeed for watching i hope you enjoyed this review and no doubt i'll see you again soon take care don't concentrate on the finger or you will miss all that heavenly glory